The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all. Watch. The Gospel of the Lord. That expression, Adventus Domini, is a famous ancient Latin expression that means the coming of the Lord. Adventus Advent means the coming. And that's how we got the term Advent, the four-week preparation that the church makes as a universal church all over the world in preparation for the second most important event in the life of Jesus. Well, before he could die and rise, he had to be born, right? So... He had to, we celebrate, of course, the great time of his birthday, and we prepare for it. I remember many years ago uh, opening the newspaper, I think I was down in Statesboro, Georgia, at about during this season, and um, one of the local, uh, uh, I think it was a Methodist church, had placed a, a, a very beautiful advertisement. And in the advertisement, it showed, it showed uh, Santa Claus sitting on his chair, you know, and there was a man, a grown man, and his suit, obviously a businessman. And the man was kneeling before Santa Claus and he had his face in his hands. And the uh, heading underneath said, all I want is to be happy. All I want is to be happy. And so I thought that was a very, I always thought about that, you know, because I think so many people in the world that our desire for happiness is in our souls. God has placed it there. And really to know Jesus and to be on the path to heaven is the greatest happiness really possible in this world, isn't it? To be living a Christian life makes the human person happy because we're made in the image and likeness of God. And when we live according to our, his teachings, we're happy. To know Jesus perfectly is to be perfectly happy. St. Bernard of Clairvaux, the wrote about the comings of Jesus. He was the first one to say that really the church celebrates three comings of Jesus. And the first was 2,000 years ago when the Lord was born in Bethlehem. And the second is when Jesus comes to us mystically through his word, through the Eucharist, the Mass, through uh, his grace when we say our prayers, when a friend calls us. It's a million ways that God comes to us, that Christ comes to us, isn't it? And the third, of course, is when Jesus comes at the end of the world on the clouds of heaven. And so I, one of the writers said that Jesus comes to us in history, in mystery, and in majesty. I always love that. In history, when he was born, in mystery through the grace of the sacraments in his word, and in majesty at the end of the day. I remember many years ago reading a, uh, uh, a little story about uh, the devil who was talking with some of his junior demons about ways to steal people away from God. And it was a very clever little story. He said, uh, the first demon stood forward and, and he said to the devil, he said, let's tell the people there's no heaven. And of course the devil stabbed him with his pitchfork and he said, you fool, the people will never believe that. God has placed a desire for heaven in their hearts. They know that's their home. And the second demon stood up and he said, well, let's tell them that there's no uh, hell. And the the devil stabbed him with his pitchfork and he said, you idiot, people will never believe that. People know what justice is and they know if the good are gonna be rewarded, then the hell, then the, the, the evil have to be punished. And then the third demon stood up and said, let's tell them there's no hurry. 
And the devil smiled because he knew it would work. He knew that most people want to do the will of God and live a good life, but sometimes people don't want to do it today. And Advent is where our mother, the church, reminds us that there is an urgency. Watch, watch, watch. Do the work spiritually that you need to do so that that relationship with Jesus is ready whenever he comes or whenever he goes. Many years ago, I remember a young a woman who came to see me in the church during Advent, and she was kind of sad, and she told me the reason she was sad. She had traveled all the way from the West Coast to see her mom and dad, and her mom and dad, um, you know, in their defense, were not doing well. They were really struggling with sickness, and, uh, that, and life was hard for them. But the girl said that she, the young woman, that she drove up to the house where she always grew up, where there were Christmas tree lights, and, and she said, there were no decorations. She said there was just one old wreath on the door that looked like it was very ancient, but there were no decorations anywhere. And she said, Father, I, I, I know that my mom and dad are doing the best they can, and their life is hard for them right now. She said, but I want to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Even though things are hard, I want us to celebrate the great joy. And so I thought to myself, you know, what a good idea during Advent to try to hang Christmas decorations, not just on your house, but in your soul. That was a good way. Maybe during Advent, hang Christmas decorations in your soul, and then during Christmas, hang them all over your house. You know, it's a kind of a good way, I think, to prepare. People will say, I think this is what we need to do. When people say, are you ready for Christmas? This is what that means. Hanging those Christmas decorations, which means doing the work we need to do, caring for others, um, going to confession, coming to Mass, doing the things that, that the Lord always, when Jesus comes, we prepare by repenting of our sins. Now, we all know that the church moves in a liturgical year, right? Why am I wearing purple today? Right? It begins today. The Advent is the first liturgical season, four weeks. Then we wear white for Christmas, right? The 12 days of Christmas, we celebrate with great solemnity that Christ has been born. Back to ordinary time, I go to green, right? Then we do Advent, back to purple. Then Easter is white for 40 days, we celebrate, right? And then back to ordinary time, green again, and it makes a circle. How many times have you lived through that cycle? Many times. <laughs> many times. And it kind of prepares us, doesn't it? But we have to remember that our life is not a circle. It's a line. It has a beginning. It has an end. And we're here to prepare ourselves. Many years ago, I remember one of the, the um, moms and dads in one of my parishes was telling me their daughter was studying uh, sent out in the Midwest, a long way away in college, and they had not seen her. She had, couldn't come home at Thanksgiving. It was too expensive. And so they were so excited because their daughter was coming home, and they had, and they, you know, they loved their, this is their child. And she had gone off to college as a freshman, hadn't seen her now in several months. And of course, the wife was like, we're so excited about going to the airport on Thursday night to pick her up when she comes. And I remember thinking about that compared to, let's say the boss calls and says, a business associate is coming in, uh, he's gonna fly in on Thursday night and you gotta pick him up and he's a very important in this, in this business and you better be on your P P's and Q's. Think about the difference between those two drives to the airport. On the first one, you're not going with fear, you're going with joy and excitement, aren't you? Because someone you know and love so much is coming home and your heart is wide open but in the second case you don't know this person at all and you can't love someone you don't know and there's a little bit of fear isn't there because you don't know what they're going to be like and i think that analogy is a very good analogy isn't it for advent season so we want to do the things we need to do to really come to know the lord so that when he comes or when we go, we can go with joy and not fear. And that's what the gospel says today. Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the Lord is coming or when we're going. The word is in Christianity. We want to watch. I always say that one of the most, I think one of the most beautiful things and one of the most beautiful symbols of Advent is an, a pregnant mother, a woman expecting a child, 
And I always say, especially when they're far along, uh, something very beautiful, that idea of joyful waiting for the child within her to be born. And, you know, moms would always tell me, Father, you know, I don't smoke and I'm not drinking anything and I'm getting the baby's room ready and I'm doing all this work, right? Make sure that baby's healthy and has a place and is welcomed when he comes. And I think that's a great image. A special guest is coming and we take every care and precaution to make sure that we welcome him when he comes with a pregnant expectation. So let's hang some Christmas decorations in our soul, opportunities to serve the poor, again, come into church, say in our prayers. We've got some good little uh, uh, devotionals in the back of the church for Advent. If you haven't taken one of those, please take one of those home, the two or three different ones. Make sure you get to confession. We're going to have penance and pizza coming up. So get two birds with one stone. And a um, chance to go to the sacrament, be three priests here for confessions, and then an opportunity to uh, have some pizza together. Amen.